Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here with a video looking at some of the key economic data for the UK economy in 2023. So hopefully this will be useful if you've got mocks coming up or obviously the exams in May and June of 24. Now 23, as you can see from the chart here, was a year of very slow growth for the UK. In fact, growth came in at 0.1% for the year as a whole, that might be revised, uh, and the UK slid into a technical recession in the final two quarters of 2023. I've given you the data here since 1987 to show you the economic cycle, obviously the, the impact of the global financial crisis in 2009, then the pandemic. So 2003 was very weak growth, the weakest since 2009. And because population grew, then per capita GDP fell by 0.7% last year in real terms. That's quite a big fall in living standards. 2023 was also a year of disinflation. What do we mean by that? Well, disinflation is a fall in the rate of inflation, the pace at which prices are going up uh, for goods and services. As this chart shows, inflation peaked at 11% in October, November of 2022 during the epicenter of the cost of living crisis. The rate of inflation has since come down, now stabilising at around 4% for the moment, still twice the inflation target of 2%. So you can see the big fall in inflation, disinflation. Uh, but again, inflation remains high by the history of the last 30 years at 4%, but falling now. Central Bank, however, Bank of England, via the Money Policy Committee, continued to raise interest rates. They have reached 5.25% and have stayed there despite the fall in inflation. So the big debate at the moment is when and by how quickly interest rates will fall from their current level. Most economists estimate that interest rates, base rates set by the central bank will start falling probably in the late spring, early summer of this year, but are unlikely to fall below 4% by the end of 2024. So going into your exam, interest rates set by the Bank of England, 5.25%, now above inflation. So the real interest rate, which is the nominal rate of interest, minus the inflation rate, is now back in positive territory. Not just the uh, base rate going up, the cost of government borrowing has also gone up in the last two or three years. Worth noting that this is the yield or the interest rate on government debt for five years, 10 years, 20 years. And you can see that by the summer of 2023, my latest data, yields on government debt were continuing to rise about 4%. That means the government has to spend more in interest on existing debt and index-linked debt and newly issued debt. I think the government's going to spend something like £110 billion, over £2 billion a week this year on interest alone on the national debt. Turning to the labour market, this was a year when the number of job vacancies did start to fall quite sharply. So these are a vacancy as a job that's been listed but not yet filled by an employer. And you can see back in 2022, again, go back to the autumn of 22, job vacancies reached a record high of just under 1.3 million, which is a lot, certainly the highest for generations. And in 2022, 23, the big story, I guess, was labour shortages, skill shortages, afflicting and affecting many, many different industries. Now, although the number of job vacancies has come down to below a million, Lots of businesses and employers still complaining about labour shortages from the construction sector to social care to tourism and hospitality to uh, the NHS, for example, skill shortages across the board. So you can see here the number of job vacancies has fallen, but it's still very high, worth bearing that in mind. The unemployment rate, the percentage of people out of work, measured by the Labour Force Survey, well, that's continued to in many ways, defy gravity. So the economy has slowed down 0.1% growth in 2023, but the rate of unemployment uh, has yet to significantly respond to that, probably a lagging indicator of the, of the economic cycle. Indeed, the latest rejigged figures, revised data, it's very hard to measure the size of the labour force at the moment with lots of inactivity, migration flows, um, and so on and so forth. The government now reckons, the ONS reckons, the Labour Force survey shows unemployment at 3.8%, which, as you can see from the chart, remains a very low figure historically. And I did mention migration there. This was the year, 
2023 when there was a very steep, significant increase in immigration. There was a rise in emigration as well. So blue and black lines there. Um, high figures, but of course the, the net balance showed huge net migration into the UK of over 600,000 people. Now, that's an economic issue. It's obviously a political and social issue. I won't comment on it in this session, but just be aware of the very high levels of net migration into the UK, particularly from outside the European Union post-Brexit. Uh, in terms of wages, now this chart shows inflation in grey, which we've already talked about, disinflation, and the rate of pay, including bonuses, the annual rate in percentage terms. Now, when the blue line is above the grey line, then real wages are rising. And when the grey line is bigger than the blue line, real wages on average are falling across the economy. And you can see that there was that big, big rise in inflation to 11%. Wage growth has picked up, as you'd expect, from the wage price effect. So rising wage claims. But in 2022, wage growth was like 6%, inflation 11%, causing a big fall in real wages. That has now partially changed. So inflation's fallen to 4%, wage growth around 6%. Quite, quite volatile, but around 6%. So for people in work, real wages probably going up. The Bank of England is a little worried that wage inflation is too high for its liking. So that blue line there, the wage inflation figure, could be a reason why they might be reluctant to start cutting interest rates. But unless they start cutting interest rates soon, then they risk causing a deeper recession. So there's a very tricky balancing act that the Monetary Policy Committee has to face. The fiscal side, the government's budget deficit, of course, balloons during the pandemic, including the billions spent on furlough and other, other items of spending, including NHS care. The budget deficit has been falling, as you would hope and expect, but the pace of deficit reduction has slowed down. And the forecast, this is from October 2023, OBR forecast for the end of last year. As we head into 24, 25, the forecast deficit coming down, but very slowly. It's very difficult to achieve a budget surplus when there are structural factors causing a deficit. One of which is slow growth, which causes a weakening of tax revenues. So the deficit is falling. It's around 4% of GDP. But because the economy isn't growing by 4%, the national debt, the total amount the government owes, continues to rise. And you can see here it's forecast to rise close to 100% of GDP, £2.5 trillion, by 25 26 um, Chief Secretary of the Treasury didn't quite get the data right, but according to this chart, the national debt is forecast to start falling gently towards the end of the forecast period. 27, 28, 29, for example, uh, although that will be beyond the next election. So the national debt is essentially 100% of GDP and the interest rate on the debt has gone up. So it's more expensive for the government to borrow and it's borrowing more. Taken as a whole, therefore, what are we saying? Inflation's come down. It's 4% at the moment. It was 11% in the end of 2022. But the economy is, is flat GDP growth 0.1% last year. IMF is forecasting only 0.5% sorry, growth this year. Only Germany will grow slower amongst the leading economies. The base rate is 5.25%. That's up. And the question is, when will it start to fall? Unemployment, though, remains low, 3.8%. Wages rising at about 6%. House prices fell last year by just 2%, according to the Nationwide Price Index. Will there be a more sizable fall in house prices reflecting more expensive mortgages, for example? Exchange rates, sterling dollar, quite stable, around $1.26. And another big, big bit of economic news to know before the exam is the minimum wage has gone up twice now and is expected to go up to £11.44. It's a more than a pound increase from the 1st of April 2024. So lots going on in the economy. I hope this video was useful in terms of just giving you a quick overview if you're revising for your mocks or for the final exams. So thanks for joining in. Uh, take care, stay safe, stay curious and see you sometime soon.